Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and in this video, we'll be looking at the Asus ProArt Display PA32 UCR Professional Monitor. If you have watched my previous video comparing three other ProArt monitors, this sits right between the $400 PA279CV and the $2000 PA32 UCX. So to say it's a more affordable version of the PA32 UCX, which specializes in HDR monitoring. I've been using it for the past week since I got it from the folks at ASUS Malaysia but I will be returning this monitor to them after this review. In the box, it comes with the monitor, a desk stand, an i1 display calibrator, a power cord, adapter cables, a color pre-calibration report and other warranty documents. The screen itself is 73 times 42.5 cm in size. It's quite standard for its size and it weighs 7.7 .7 kg without a stand and it can be supported by most monitor arms in the market. In case you just want to mount it on a desk stand, it can be installed easily and you still can make ergonomical movements such as tilting, swiveling and pivoting to a comfortable angle. There is also a picture by picture PBP mode where you can split the screen up to four sections if you are using this as a secondary monitor or if you need more open tabs. Interesting fact, you can also set up different color settings like sRGB and DCI-P3 on separate sides of the monitor when you're in this PBP mode. So I found this feature pretty cool. The buttons are still located behind the monitors, which is aesthetically pleasing, but it's annoying to use, especially for someone who has their monitors side by side like myself. It has a USB-C port, a display 1.2, 3 HDMI 2.0, 3 USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, and an earphone jack, and also a USB C 80 watt power delivery port. Now that USB C is becoming an international standard, you just need to connect the USB C to your device for power supply, signal, and high speed data, and you're good to go. The inputs are located at the bottom of the monitor, which again makes it aesthetically pleasing, but annoying to use and as professionals it's no surprise that we plug and unplug devices from our monitors all the time be it for calibrating or bringing it on set so having to fiddle with the port is definitely not something i look forward to there are also two two watt speakers which are not great but at least it's there. The PA32 UCR is a 32 inch 4K or technically UHD monitor with a standard 3840 x 2160 image resolution. For a monitor this size, 4K is the only way to go. Unless you are getting a monitor below 24 inches, it's best to go with the 4K resolution or not, you'll regret it later, like a lot of my friends. What's special about the PA32 UCR is the HDR display featuring mini LED backlight technology, which means that the brightness is controlled by a mini LED panel at the back and the colors are coming from an IPS panel in the front. A benefit for having this kind of display is that you can get to a high peak brightness 1000 nits to be exact without sacrificing on color accuracy because they are both separate panels. There are 576 individual mini LED dimming zones behind the IPS panel, a little less than my PA32 UCX but we'll do some comparison on that later. The viewing angle for this IPS screen is supposed to be wide, 178 degrees to be exact, but starting from the 90 degree angle, you start to see a magenta shift appear from the far side. The PA32 UCR covers 100% sRGB, 100% Rec. 709, 98% DCI-P3, 99.5% Adobe RGB, and 87% Rec. 2020. I don't really have a comparison graph to show you the stats with other monitors but from my market research I can tell you that this is pretty good as far as color space coverage goes. What's more important is the color accuracy. Is this monitor accurate enough to be worthy of the ProArt label? It advertises a factory pre-calibration of Delta E less than 1, best being Delta E of 0 which is totally unheard of. So is it good enough right out of the box? Yes it is. But there's a saying, if you care about color accuracy, calibrate your monitor. Through my calibration test using the ASUS ProArt Calibration 2.0 software, 
I got pretty good results. This is what I would usually get from most of my other monitors. The PA32UCR also has hardware calibration which allows you to store your presets and calibration in the hardware itself so you don't have to recalibrate it every time you plug it into a new device. So let's talk about the key feature of the PA32UCR High Dynamic Range HDR Monitoring. To be completely honest with you, up to this point, I haven't done anything in HDR because it's quite a scary topic itself and from what I've heard, you have to learn a whole new calibration and grading workflow to work with HDR delivery formats. Just so happened that there's a HDR workshop hosted by our local suppliers this week, so I'm going to try and explore the capabilities of HDR and let you know my thoughts then. He's a colorist for how many years? Uh, wow, good question. Almost <laughs> 10 years. Wow, almost 10 years. Yeah. Okay, so... And so the person who's shooting is also a colorist. So yeah. <laughs> this is my channel, I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have been grading for HDR, right? Yes. Like, so usually directors will come to you asking for HDR deliverables. Yeah, it's a bit different in Malaysia now because you tell the directors that we do HDR. So how about you try HDR? You know, it's like telling them because um, they don't come with like, hey, can we do a film in HDR? It's like, hey, your film is looking beautiful. You know, why don't you try coloring your film in HDR? And then you just show them. You know, you show a few shots and show them um, how it looks. And of course, you know, HDR the image looks beautiful, and they were like, yeah. And how much does it cost? And then you can negotiate and if it works. Yeah. So, so does it cost extra to grade in HDR? Yeah, it's a new grading. So it's, you have to cut a grade. Uh, uh, SDR and HDR will be a two different color grading. Unless you have a Dolby Vision license, so you can uh, down convert from HDR to SDR. I see, so you have and to do two times. Of if you have a Dolby Vision license, no. But if you don't have a Dolby Vision license, yes. And to get a Dolby Vision license, it's not just you can buy it. They will come, they will visit your studio, they will check if you know what you're doing. You will have to go through the training with them. So, so the license is not a product, it's a certification. It's a certification. Wow. It's called Dolby Vision Certification. So there's only one company in Malaysia who has it, which is Basecamp. And so, so what monitors are you using to for reference? So HDR? for me, I have uh, so for I'm HDR. I'm doing OLED for now and for HDR, and then I'm using uh, my 709 monitor for my P3 and 709 monitor. But yeah, it's not the best monitor to use because it goes. So I check my calibration; it goes to 800 nits, which is quite okay. So, but you need a thousand nit monitor if you can get it. But it's pretty expensive. But if I have, like, I'm doing three films now in HDR, but if I can get that done, then I might invest in a thousand monitor. I see, I see. So it pays good enough to get the extra equipment. So, <laughs> so doing three films, if you do it in HDR, you're basically getting money for six films. Wow. So it's double the price. Because okay. you have to kind of grade again, you have to do it again in. Is there a lot of work to grade in HDR? You have to grade it again. You have to regrade the whole film in HDR. So it's a from scratch or like from whatever you have. It depends how you make your uh, note tree, right? So I know that I have to grade it in HDR, and I am let's say doing it in P3. I will make my note tree in a way where I can use some of the balance notes for HDR grid and then tone the luminance down for SDR or get the contrast. So it depends on how you set your note tree. But I would say you will still have to do 70 to 80% work again. So that's yeah, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Have you have you tried the Pro Art, the ASUS Pro Art HDR monitors? No I have not. But I, I would like I would love to give a try, but I have not so far. I don't have that monitor. Okay. Thanks man, thanks man. Thank you. Okay, thank you.
High dynamic range provides a range of luminance and colors that are closer to what the human eye can experience. The ProArt Display PA32UCR is a VESA Display HDR 1000 certified, offering up to 1000 nits of peak brightness with 4K resolution and dynamic local dimming for rich contrast, making it ideal for HDR content streaming. ProArt Displays feature Asus Smart HDR technology that supports multiple HDR formats. HDR10 ensures compatibility with existing streaming video and a growing list of HDR-enabled games, while Hybrid Log Gamma HLG supports broadcast and satellite TV formats. The PA32 UCR supports multiple HDR10 curves including PQ Clip, PQ Optimize and PQ Basic. Covering all content creator needs, the required curve can be selected via the OSD menu. HDR Preview allows users to view all content with a HDR simulation effect without HDR metadata. This feature can be used on various types of input including feeds from editing softwares or directly from a camera. Although this mini LED backlight technology allows you to achieve high peak brightness for HDR, it does come with its downfalls just as any other panel. One of the biggest issues is halation coming from high contrast areas. I know Asus has implemented some technology to counter this type of halation, but to my eyes, it is still there. But this is just a nature of this type of panel, so I don't think it has a solution. So that's something that you have to watch out for. So I want to make a quick comparison on the PA32 UCR with my PA32UCX. The PA32UCR is slightly cheaper because it doesn't have the full features of the PA32UCX such as a lower peak brightness, 1000 comparing to 1200 on the X and less dimming zones, a lack of monitor hood and a simpler design. But it pretty much does everything you need from a HDR monitor. Other than that, I don't see any disadvantages that the PA32UCR has compared to its older brother. In fact, this monitor is much lighter and it has a thinner frame which is one of my complaints about the PA32UCX. It's too thick. So this monitor is built for creatives with the need of accurate colors such as graphic designers, photographers, product designers, and most importantly, filmmaking to utilize the HDR capabilities. I would recommend it if you want to consume or create content in true HDR which is 1000 nits but don't want to spend the extra bucks for features that you don't need on a PA32UCX. In my opinion, this is the monitor to get if it fits your needs. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.